old shot on it. Yeah. It's a, it's a good old shot.16, 17 miles an hour. It'll stay, it'll stay, it'll stay on plane at yeah. 17, 18 miles yeah. an hour. Absolutely. Okay, I left this footage in here. This is actually a fish catch from uh, that I put in the Rabbit Report a couple of weeks ago uh, when we filmed this. But I put this in here because you're going to hear us talk later about the front end measurements on this boat. And this is, uh, this is exactly what Mark's mentioning to me about the width of the boat. And you'll see we're just going down a grass line here flipping. And uh, we are literally standing side by side, right on the nose of the boat. Uh, it's it's very spacious up there. It's uh, it's going to be one of the wider boats we've looked at. And uh, yeah, I catch a couple grass fish. If you haven't seen that video, I'll post uh, the link to it right there above. When it's seven feet deep and your bait falls ten feet. Something's going down down there. Yeah. I told y'all there was flipping grass on Rayburn. There he is. But with this, with this one here, with the big ice box lid here, I can sit right here and get in my storage box. Mm -hmm. And I don't carry a lot. It looks like there's a bunch in there, but it's bags from the stores and a few. Wait, so there's a downside on the tackle store? Oh, there's a big downside on the tackle <laughs> store. Yeah, you have to see in my truck. They call it, well, they call the boat Rambo 3. <laughs> because if you need it it's pretty much in the boat or in the truck but i can sit here and get in my rod box right here and pull my rods out mm -hmm. rig my rods up and then i set them just over here in the floorboard or where yours are over there and you you got plenty of room to move around yeah, and do it's, that it's, you're not cramped up trying to do stuff. right that's that was my complaint to myself and why i pulled my console out of the links was that was so tight right there with that other console in there. That's why I pulled that other console out of the links for now. I've still got it, obviously. You but. know, and, and if you've got a wife, if you care about your team partner, I suggest getting a second console. Yeah. Because they're, you, they're removable. They're $900,000 mm -hmm. last I checked. And <clears throat> you can see here, there's nothing to taking it in or out. Right. That's the only three that hold it in. I have these in because once I took them, the console out and these were out, the female threads in here, I'm looking at it, it still had lithium grease on it. And we all know one little speck of lithium grease goes a long way. Yep. So it's like, okay, how am I going to 
you just know keep them in there keep that clean so i just put them back in and they have not been in our way all year so any of you who haven't seen the video i'll, I'll post a link right there of how easy it is to pull the that second console out it is really really easy to yeah. get them in and out it's but like you said job. on a rainy day or especially on a january or february day down here when you're running in 28 degrees or you guys up north running in cold weather yep. it's super nice to have that second console where you can just pop it in and uh i mean again it's completely clean you it, it looks just as if there's a console there or not a console there either way it's just mm -hmm. easy easy to do so yeah, I like that. That's a that's a better setup for traditional style than what the Lynx is for guys that really feel cramped and or have a problem with that center box being right. your rod box on the Lynx. The upside to the rod box on the Lynx is you can get so many rods in that rod box. It's just such well, a big and, rod and box. on the Lynx, you know, you can sit right here. Not if the console's in. Not without a console yeah. in it. You can sit right here. Get all your rods out yep. and as you're rigging them you just set them right down here and you just keep on rigging so you know you sit up higher you can sit down on the step depending yep. on if it's a links or the puma yeah with, with the console out of the links i like it because yeah. it got the big center console and then i got my little day box over right. here right i like that setup but <clears> this I, is... I like a day box this boat here you know the, the puma doesn't have the day box but i just keep everything right in there well you say that i mean that's basically a day box you could make it but I like to sit down as much as I can too. Yeah, I understand. I saw that knee brace. I got a there. bum knee, so. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the We Need New Parts show. So big ice chest. He uses it forwards. He's using the ice chest under here, which is exactly like mine. You know, I carry my spare waters in there, but as I'm sitting here thinking through it, that actually makes more sense because ice and water weighs a lot. So why not move Keep it, it in the back. back of the boat? And that's a, that's a, you know, it's great to use for your trash, string, bait packages. Pretty good size box there. And then day boxes up here. Same there. Can you remove those trays if you want to? I think they're glued down. Okay. And then that's that little document stoller that I still hadn't figured out how to work in mine, sadly. And then quick net storage right there in the middle. We saw this one earlier open. I can't see. There's no tubes in that one, is there? No, there's no tubes in there. And then there's your big rod box. New setup back there. So you're more limited to how many rods you can carry with this design, aren't you? Yeah, I've got, you can lay three, four, five down in the bottom. Oh, um, I see there's hole in the bottom too, yeah. And then I think there's nine holes there, nine or 10 holes. But what I'm talking about is you've got specified holders here, but you've got a shelf there and a shelf here you can hang them on. Mm -hmm. And then you can obviously run them under the front up there as well. Right. And on these boxes, I've noticed you've done it, but this has to be down to latch it before the latch. Yep. Okay, so uh, looking around a little bit, uh, my one complaint that is in my boat that's in this boat as well. Is it still has those raised cleats. I hate those raised cleats. These are recessed. I would so much rather have those style cleats than those style cleats. It's got those really good box lids that they've created. It's got these traditional ones on your live wells. The live well is basically the super deep. Same live well I've got in the Lynx, which I have come to love, which was very unusual for me, but I like the depth. And I understand now more about why they make that narrow deep live well uh what else in here oh you were talking earlier so this is a cool little deal so on this boat they make a little day box right here but what they've done is that's where your power pump pumps are so you got really easy access to reprogram or do whatever you need to do to your power pumps and then you got a little day box right there as well and that's both the same on both sides right Okay, we've already been through the back of the boat. 
what else? Oh, uh, got your tool storage. And the one thing, and I actually didn't notice it until I got my links, is there's no good storage place for your ruler. You have to put it in that box, in that port side front box. And in this boat, they've now got you a place to store your ruler real easy. It's livable in the links, but I would love to see a, uh, a designated spot on top of the cap where you don't have to open a box in the rain to get to your ruler. Two tanks, right? Two 32 gallon tanks. So you can put $300 worth of gas in your bass cat if you want to. Two 32 gallons, 64 times basically five bucks a gallon, a little more than $300. And we are running, by the way, today. So you do the same thing I do. We're running starboard side, 10 gallons, port side, full. And that's kind of what I do. Starboard side is just there. And again, I'm doing it because I fish by myself so much. But it's just there. If I get somewhere, you can get almost anywhere. Well, on Rayburn, you can get anywhere on 10 gallons of gas as long as you're not running wide open. You can get home from anywhere on 10 gallons of gas. So that's your, oh crap, I forgot to fill up, but I can get home gas. Yeah, there's 10 to 15 gallons. On the front deck, turn go the other way, sun's in it. So we talked about this earlier. We can stand and, and you said you believe this is wider. It's a little bit wider from corner to corner. Now I've measured all of them back here, which we're gonna measure in a little bit. So at the power pole, at the pole seat, excuse me, not power pole. Yeah. But this one, there's a lot of width right at the nose of the boat. And, and like when we were flipping standing. earlier, yeah, well, you're, right. they'll see it on the video earlier. We were flipping, standing basically side by side. You got, so they've got, uh, does this one have the lightning detector? Yeah, it's got yep. the lightning detector. Has that ever gone off on you? Oh well, yeah. It has. Mm -hmm. Mine's not gone off, which tells you I've become a fair weather fisherman. Yeah but I, have, I haven't had it. So, and then you got your nav and your battery check up there and the same trim, which as you guys know, I want to be able to do it with my foot. I love the little spot he's put right there to put your trim, uh, your power pole buttons on. That's a great idea. We'll put it on the trailer here in a little bit. I, I think I've shown you guys everything other than the measurements on the boat, which I forgot my measuring tape. So we'll do that when we get off the water. And uh, he's even decked his out with a stereo in it. Guys, I don't think to talk about this at all until I watch this later. Look at me. I'm really not even, I'm not fighting this boat at all. My hands are steady. This boat's running mid-70s, straight as a string, and uh, I'm not having to move the wheel at all. It's really impressive at speed. It's boat. really nimble boat, yeah. So we were just talking about the handling out there, and he said that you can just corner the crap out of it, which you can. 
uh, that little run I made right there, it, you know, so we've talked about this. It takes boats a while to get up to speed because they continue to get better grip. But in that mile there, we got to a really easy 76 miles an hour. And that's not an R. That's a straight, that's a straight, straight 300. So, uh, and he's only turning 5,800 RPM. So there's probably a lot more, or you said 6,000 RPM. 6,000. 6,000 RPM. So that motor is designed to run a little bit more RPMs than that. So he's working a prop right now. He thinks he needs a 24 and a half with a little bit of cup in it. But uh, he's already admitted that what he wants here is an 85 mile an hour boat. And uh, many of us will pay the prop man to give us that speed, but I think you got it here. I think it'll run that fast. Yeah, and the prop man that we're using, he can uh, he can make it happen. Yeah, yeah, so uh, we'll get a future report when he gets that prop in. As with everything else in the fishing industry, it takes forever to get it, but uh, that boat will roll and it rides really good. All right guys, so I've got a little wheel time in it. Uh, I really, really like it. One of the complaints you'll hear from Bass Cat or from non Bass Cat guys and from some Bass Cat guys is cats have a little side slop in them, a spe well, mostly when you got a quartering wind, quartering here or quartering here. And so, Mark and I didn't talk about this. So, Mark's come out of you've run Rangers, you've run what else did you run? I've been Ranger and Bass Cat. So, what was your last Ranger? The Z21. Okay, so. You know a little bit about rough riding boats oh, if you yeah. ran it as he's 21. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. But <clears throat> so one of the questions I had for him was what are the driving characteristics you feel differently? So your last boat was a Lynx before this boat. Actually, your last. I had three Lynx. Three Lynx before this boat. So he likes the wide body just like I do, probably because that's what we're used to coming out of the Ranger. And he said, one of the things that I've noticed in this boat is it's got way less of that side slop at speed or at slow speed. And I noticed that coming across today, and we've got a little bit of wind now, but there is, I'm going to say, 70, 80% less side slop. Would you agree? The, oh, yeah, minimum 70, 80. Yeah. So if you've been in a bass cat and that was something you didn't like, it doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, this boat, I don't know what they've done to it, but this boat has less. So. And, and, you know, on the bass cats, it has it in the Lynx, it has it in the Cougar. It had it in the old Puma. I mean, they all have it. Yep. It's just this one here is the least amount on the boats I've been in. I've been in pretty much all of them. I never, I still haven't been in a Jaguar. So I do know, I do know that this hole is kind of based off the Jaguar hole. You know, a lot of people call it the baby Jaguar, but uh, that's the only one I still hadn't been in. But you know, I'm not gonna get more of them until I get ready to go buy me a 450R and put on. Right, well, but I believe this boat's deck is quite a bit larger than a jack. Maybe so. I'm pretty sure it is, so. We've got measurements, we'll compare. But here's a hole shot on it. Where's my, there's my trim. Okay, so he said put it in the four hole and trim it down. So he likes it in the four hole and trim down. And by the way, so that's with 90 degree water and I'm sure I'm sure north of 90 degree air temperature. Mark said, check this out. This is really wild. So check where the trim gauge is. That's wild. Half trim. Still trim out. Okay, so good.